This tutorial will show you how to create a dirty screen post-process effect using my Blend Modes Pack, now available on the Unreal Engine Marketplace. If you wish to purchase the Blend Modes Pack or any of my other products, you can find a link to them in the description of this video or on my website elias-wick.com. Your dirty screen post-process effect will look something like this once you've followed all of the steps in this tutorial. Once you've installed the Blend Modes Pack and opened your project, go into your content browser and create a new material. You can name this material to whatever you want. I'm going to name the material to M underscore dirty screen. Before we create the actual effect using the Blend Modes Pack, we want to create a post-process volume. This is required in order for the effect to be shown in the viewport. To do this, you want to go into the Place Actors panel, select the Volumes tab, and scroll down until you find the post-process volume. If you can't find your Place Actors panel, you can enable it under Window and Place Actors. Once you have located the post-process volume, drag it into your level. Select the volume and scroll down until you find the Rendering Features group. In this group you can find the post-process materials. Expand the section and add an array element using the plus icon. Click the Choose drop-down menu and select Asset Reference. You can now press the Non drop-down menu and select your newly created material. You need to be within the bounds of your post-process volume in order for the post-process material to be shown. If you wish to have the post-process material extend throughout the entire level, you can scroll down until you find the post-process volume settings group and enable the infinite extent. You can now open your newly created material so that we can create the dirty screen effect. Since we've already bound the material to the post-process volume, the effect should be visible in the viewport as soon as we apply our changes to the material. In the material editor, we need to go ahead and change the material domain from surface to post-process. This is required for the material to be able to be viewed within the post-process volume. We can now find our blend modes by right-clicking inside of the grid and then typing in Elias Wick dash blend modes. In our case, we want to go ahead and select Linear Dodge. By itself, this blend mode is not going to do anything on its own, so if we plug in the result to the emissive color, nothing is going to happen. We're now going to add two nodes that will help us to tweak the dirty screen effect. We're going to right click and search for Lerp, and then select Linear Interpolate. We're then going to hook up the Lerp output into the blend input. We're now going to right click again and type in Power, and then select the Power node. The Power node's output is going to be connected to the Lerp's B input. We also want to select the Power node and change the exponent from 2 to 4. We now want to right click again and type in Texture Sample, and then select the Texture Sample node. We then want to hook up the texture sample RGB output into the base input of the power node. Whilst still having the texture sample selected, in the details panel we want to go ahead and add a texture. In my case I'm going to be adding a noise texture. This will help with conveying the dirty screen effect. We're now going to right click again and add a texture cord. This will help us with tiling and changing the texture size. The texture cord's output is going to be plugged into the UVs of the texture sample. I'm going to select the texture cord and change the U tiling and V tiling to 0.5. This will make the texture larger. I'm going to right click one more time and add the last node, which is the scene texture. Whilst having the scene texture selected, in the details panel, you want to go ahead and change the scene texture ID from scene color to post process input 0. Finally, you can plug in the scene texture color output into the linear dodge blend mode base input. If we now apply, save, and minimize the material editor, we can now see the effects in the viewport. If you're not happy with the result, you can always go back and change the LERP, the power, 
the texture and the texture coordinates. The Lerp node will allow you to change the alpha or the opacity of the texture. The texture coordinate will allow you to change the scale of the texture. So you can simply increase or decrease the tiling of the texture. The power node will allow you to add more or reduce the detail from the texture itself. Once you're happy with the result, you can apply the changes, save it, and then close down the shader. Thank you very much for watching this video. If you want to know how to create a heaven-like post-process effect like this one, make sure to watch the Heaven post-process video tutorial where I use the Blend Mode Pack to create the effect. For more information about my Blend Mode Pack, make sure to check the Unreal Engine Marketplace link in the video description or on my website elias-wick.com.